So what happened? Why did the A7 sink on that fateful day? Before the notes of the official inquiry are examined, it is necessary to look again at the problem that made the A-class of submarines so vulnerable, their pitiful lack of reserve buoyancy. The A-class were developed from the original Royal Navy Holland submarine and consisted of a single-skin pressure hull with all the ballast and buoyancy tanks carried internally. There were no watertight doors or any partition of the boat whatsoever, so if any water got in, then it could go almost anywhere, especially into the engine compartments. The ballast tanks would provide the major buoyancy for the submarine when empty. These tanks were flooded pre-diving to allow the boat to run awash with just the conning tower exposed. At this stage in the diving sequence, this separate buoyancy tank provided 600 pounds of reserve buoyancy that kept the submarine afloat. 600 pounds might sound a lot, but it's only 60 gallons, not much more than two large dustbins. Any water entering the boat at this stage would be very serious, as even a small amount was enough to submerge the boat without warning. As the A-boats tended to pivot around their centre of gravity when supported by this tank, the usual practice was to run the submarine with a stern-down trim of about 6 degrees, because when heading into sea, wave action could easily force the submarine's bow down and thereby cause an uncontrolled dive. By 1914, to dive a submarine from surface trim was relatively simple and well practiced, though it was still considered a dangerous procedure in these obsolete craft. The boat would have its ballast tanks flooded to bring her awash, with a conning tower just above the surface. The petrol engine would be stopped, and the electric motor switched in. The hatches and ventilators would be shut, and the stern planes would drive the boat underwater. If all was well, and the electric motor was stopped, the submarine would rise to the surface due to the effect of a buoyancy tank and its 600 pounds of lift. At slow speeds, however, the stern planes would probably not exert enough effect to overcome the buoyancy tank, so it would have to be partially flooded to achieve neutral buoyancy, thus reducing the submarine's reserve buoyancy even further. But even in this condition, the boat could still surface by moving forward and using its planes to drive the boat to the surface. The buoyancy tank was then blown clear with compressed air to resume surface awash running, and the ballast tank was also blown to bring the submarine as high out of the water as possible. All in all, it was a tricky business, which called for fine judgment from the crew. On the day of the A7's loss, the notes for the official inquiry state that the A7 was meant to have been in this position, where the water was only about 90 feet deep. However, due to a delay in getting to the exercise area, Lieutenant Wellman was late on station and two and a half miles to the southeast of where the A7 was supposed to be, and in water that was nearly 150 feet deep. This was a crucial error. The American version of the Royal Navy Holland, the ADA, had been depth tested and found to be unsafe around 100 feet. The A7 was developed from these designs and was basically a stretched version. Although being a larger vessel, it is not known whether she was built with correspondingly stronger materials. If she wasn't, then it follows that she would have been weaker than the Hollands, and even more susceptible to damage from excess depth. The notes from the inquiry show that in order to carry out an attack on the Pygmy, the A7 would have had to head her bows into the choppy sea. She was seen to submerge a wash, and when she disappeared it was assumed she was getting ready to start the attack. However, with the propensity of these crafts to dive while running awash, it is fairly certain that her bows were pushed under by the waves before Lieutenant Wellman and his crew could shut the hatch and dog the vents. Even if she was only making five knots, the A7 was still covering the best part of ten feet per second, and as she was pushed under, she would have taken a huge amount of water on board, far more than the sixty gallons of her reserve buoyancy. Not having had the time to exercise and train together for desperate emergencies like this, the crew would have been overwhelmed with the horror of a rapidly filling boat. Frantic efforts by the crew to surface the boat would have only ensured a bows-up attitude, which would have allowed any water in the boat to rush to the stern, destroying any trim that she might have had left, and flooding the engines. As the water gushed in in ever greater quantities, the submarine would have sunk faster and faster, and as it passed near the 100-foot mark, it is possible that her internal ballast tanks gave way, causing even more water to pour into the stricken boat. Such was the speed of the A7's descent, that when she hit the bottom stern first, 22 feet of the submarine were buried deep into the mud. 
By then, all her crew would have been dead. After a brief moment of horror, they would have faced merciful oblivion. <laughs>